Okay, for today's example, we're going to show you how, to, how to use Python to do scientific numerical calculations. So for example, maybe you have a problem that says the following. You are supposed to be able to plot this function, f of x, as a function of x, right? But this is equal to the integral, it's a bounded integral from, say, negative k naught times gamma, all the way up to k naught times delta, and your function itself is sine of k times x squared dk, okay? So I like this example because it uses the integral, a bounded integral. You have to call on a special function. In that function, there's trigonometric functions, right? So there's lots going on here. Um, so how do you do that in something like Python? It's pretty simple, okay? So what I've generated here is I've commented a bunch of the different sections that are going, going to go into our different code. We're just going to go through them one by one. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in the different libraries that we're going to be using, all right? So the different libraries, we're going to import uh, mat plot lib dot pi plot and we're going to call that just plt right so we need mat plot lib um, pi, pi plot uh, we're also going to need um, scipy so we're going to import scipy dot integrate as integrate so that'll be the name that we call that function we're going to need uh, math so we're going to import math uh, let's import um, numpy and we'll call that np, okay? So those are the different functions that we're going to need in this, right? So now let's define a value for k. Let's say that k is equal to two, right? That's what our k naught value is gonna be equal to. Um, we need to prepare labels that we're gonna use when we plot. So let's go ahead and say that label one for our first data set, right? Because we can change the value of gamma and delta for different data sets. For the first data set, let's say that that's equal to, um, we're gonna do the raw text, right? Inside of here, we're going to do, um, let's see, let's call this me doing the dollar signs. That allows me to do tech writing. So, for example, backslash gamma gives us the gamma symbol, right? That's going to be equal to 5%. When you do percent, you have to do backslash again with the percent sign. Um, let's say that k naught, that's equal to, um, let's define delta. Delta is equal to, it's going to be 1 backslash percent, and then k naught is going to be equal to, instead of typing it out, let's actually call on this value here. So we're going to concatenate this string, we're going to do str, that's going to turn a new uh, number into a string, so for the value of k it's going to turn it into a string. Okay, and there we go. We've got our label 1, and we've got, let's do label 2. For label 2, instead of going from 5%, let's go all the way to 10%. And instead of going to a delta of 1%, let's have the delta go to 2%. So these are the two cases that we've got. We've got case 1 and case 2. All right. Now we need to initialize a series, um, some arrays where we're going to store the values for our x and y data. Anytime you plot something, you have to have your x and y data. So let's go ahead and create a variable. It's going to call it x data, and we're going to use numpy here. So np, that's for numpy. A, that's what we named it. It's going to be a range. We're going to take in values from negative 20 all the way to positive 20, and we're going to do so in inter intervals of 0 0.1, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing for um, our y data sets because we're going to initialize the arrays. So we're going to fill these with other values later on, right? Y data is going to become something else later on, but we're just going to create the array right now. So y data 1 and y data 2 and x data, these are all cur currently the same thing. So if we were to run this program right now, if we were to save it and run this program, um, oh, it catches a spelling error. First off, we missed an E on integrate. Okay. And okay, if we go to our variable explorer, we've created these different variables, which all go from negative 20 up to positive 20, right? Using 0.1 intervals. Okay. And our strings should look okay. Get this out of the way. Sure enough, there's our string. Okay. All right. All right, we're in business, let's keep going. Okay, now that we've done that, now we need to define our function, right? So the function, we're gonna define f of x. This is a function f where you send in a number x, and what will it give back? Well, it's going to return, um, okay, what will it return? Let's look at the syntax on this. We're going to do integrate.quad, and the thing that we're going to integrate with respect to is lambda k, so that's gonna be the dk, they call it lambda k. Um, then our function itself is going to be math.sign, so we're going to call in the math library and pull up sign. Inside that, it's going to be k times x, and that is squared. And in Python, to do an exponent, you do multiply, multiply. So those two asterisks, two, that means x is squared. 
right? Now, we can actually do a bounded integral. So we're going to go from k low, some lower value, some lower bound, up to call it k high, okay? And if we tried to run this right now, if we tried to run something, like just do like f of 5, it would send in 5 for the x value, and it would, take, it would evaluate this integral. But the problem is we haven't told it what k low and k high are. So this would give us an error. So we need to go ahead and set those limits of integration. So our next step is we're going to say that k low is equal to what's well, going to be negative k times 0 0.05. Now we know that because in our first case we said it was 5% on the lower end and it was 1% on the high end. So k high, that's going to be equal to k multiplied by 0 0.01. Okay. Um, we're going to also declare a counter variable i and set it to equal to 0 for a minute. The reason why is because in this section we're now going to use our x data along with our function that we generated, f of x, we're going to use that to generate our y data, right? The thing that we're going to be plotting on the y-axis. So we're going to say the following. We're going to say for item in x data. This is a for loop. It's, it means that we're going to hop all the way through that loop, right? All this, all the way through this array, it's going to go item by item through this array, and it's going to do something. So what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to do the following. We want to say that now um, y data 1 at the ith position so starting from 0 in the array, we're going to rewrite the values in that array um, with new values. So what are they equal to? Well, they're going to be a function, right? But instead of just x, we have to send it the real data, which is x data at the position i. So that's the value that we're going to send to our function for x, okay? And the last thing we have to do is we have to put this 0 on the end in the square brackets. The reason why is because this integrate.quad function actually sends back two values. It sends back, the first thing is the actual value of the integral, but it also sends a second value, which is the uncertainty. And we only want the value, so that's why I'm only asking for the zero, okay? Um, and then we're going to say i should equal i plus one. So we're gonna iterate as we go up, okay? So we're gonna grab this, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for the second data set, or for the second case, I should call it. For the second case, instead of being 5%, it's going to be minus 10%, and it's going to be up to positive 2% of our k value. Okay, So we're going to do the exact same thing. Only thing we have to change is the name of where the y data is getting stored. It's going to be y data 2 now. Okay, So if we ran this right now, um, let's go ahead and do so. Let's see if we get any errors. Okay, it ran it. You notice now that now we've got k low and k high as values, and these should be different. Yeah, these are no longer negative 20 to positive 20. They're doing something else, okay? So now we're go ahead. We're ready to go ahead and start plotting this. So we're going to say that fig equals plt dot figure, and that's going to equal. Now let's give it a label one, and then let's say our figure size um, is equal to four comma four. That means it's a four by four inch figure. Um, so if we ran this right now, it's going to create a figure, but there shouldn't be anything in it. Uh, make sure I did my syntax right on that. Um, for the figure, plt dot figure. Oh, not. Let's see. Ah, I see. You don't need that, that equal sign there. One comma fig size four four. That should work now. So it's going to create a figure, but there's nothing in that figure. So it's like, all right, it made a figure, but we haven't told to show it or anything. So we're going to get to that. Um, now let's go ahead and put data in this, right? So let's put data in this figure. So we're going to do plt, calling on our pyplot library, and we're going to do plot. Okay. When you plot data, let's do our x data and our y data. And then you can do anything else you want. You want to give it colors or line width or size or markers, all that stuff you can do. Let's just do color for a minute. And let's say that the color should be equal to, say, blue. Um, and let's give it a line style. And let's say it's, we want it to be a, maybe a, a, a dashed line. So we're going to do like that. Okay? Good enough. Uh, we also want a label. Label should be equal to label 1, right? This is our first data set. Oh, y data 1. There we go. Okay, we can grab that, and we can do the exact same thing for data 2. So we're going to change this to y data 2. We're going to set, plot a second set of data. Let's change the color, make it maybe red. And instead of a broken line, we'll do a solid line. And we change our label to now be label 2. So if we go ahead and plot this, we should actually start seeing our data now. Yeah, sure enough, it generates a plot. You can see red data, you can see blue data. One's dashed, one isn't. Um, let's go ahead now and do a few other things. Let's set the limits, right? We're going to go to PLT. That's our pyplot function. We're going to set the Y limits, right? Right now, it currently goes all the way down. This figure goes to the bottom, so there's no good room for a legend, especially because our legend's a little long. So we're going to change that. We're going to go all the way down to what values? Negative 0 0.2, and we're going to go as high as 0 0.05. So when we replot that, 
Now our y axis is different. We have some room down here for a, a legend. So let's go ahead and tell it to do a legend, plt.legend. That's going to tell it to put it just in, it's going to pick its best spot where it doesn't overlap the data very much. And it does a pretty good job. Sure enough, there's our data now. Um, if we wanted to, we could put um, axes labels, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do plt.xlabel, um, and we can just give it a name. Um, so we're going to do raw text. We're going to say x space parentheses m. So we're plotting it as a function of m, right? The r, uh, sorry, x in meters, I should say. So now we've got that label there. And then the y axis is a little trickier because it's actually that complicated integral, but we can express that. So we're going to do y label. Okay. Um, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do our we're gonna do math typing. So we do the number signs and everything in between there's gonna be math typing. Okay, we're gonna do the integral at backslash int, that's the latex for integral. We're gonna do it from a, the lower bound. We do that that little subspace, this little uh, space there, that means it from something lower, it's gonna be subscript. Um, up to some higher limit, right? So the caret means it's going to go to a superscript, so to some upper limit. So for the lower limit, we're going to go, it's going to be negative k naught times gamma, okay? And on the upper limit, it's going to be positive k naught times delta. Our function itself is sine of k times x squared. Now here I do the caret too, because now we're in latex terminology, we're not in Python, so that's why I do the caret here for the exponent. Then this is going to be dk, of course. So, unless we've made a mistake, this should now give us, yeah, we have the integral showing up there as our y-axis. So we're basically done. The last thing maybe we want to do is save this figure. So over here we're going to go to what's our syntax. It's going to be fig.savefig. We can give it a name. So call it like example.png maybe. You can even set things like the resolution, like dpi is equal to 300. And now, in the folder where we're working, which is in my downloads folder, this should go ahead and create um, a ping which has uh, that resolution of this figure. Let's see how it did it. Okay, how did it do? Okay, how did it do? Up comes our figure and it looks pretty... Um, it didn't show our y-axis yet, so let's fix that. Okay, it's leaving off the y-axis. Let's try putting this in and see if that keeps it now. Okay, it's generated our figure. And did it keep it? Okay, yeah, B box inches tight. That kept it. It was cutting off that Y axis for some reason. So now it's contained, and when it generates it, you see that it's the integral from this lower bound to the higher bound, the sign of this function, decay. It created our legend with the K naught value, so if we were to change that, make it 10 in our code, it would update that in the figure, and it's good to go. So that is how you do some scientific plotting and calculations in Python.